now she's a good friend of Margaret. There it is, great hair. Well, Margaret, Margaret, I had it. A notion she's gonna make a quilt instantly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, consulted about the instancy. I must say that I was paralyzed. <laughs> I have I I get inspired. I I float on clouds and create up there, but when I start with the material down to earth it is. But Margaret has <coughs> great ability on all sorts of different fields of the artistic <coughs> expression, from cooking to uh, to her music. She has color sense, so she just went after it. It was life and death. So I, <laughs> I went along with her and she'd ask me a few questions. I said, Margaret, you're making the quilt. I'm not. So she just suddenly decided what she's going to make. So there it is. That's called the ocean wave. Also, I think this uh, the folk art years ago called it the windmill. But there's so many different interpretations of that layout that you can do so many different movements with the light and dark color you see and texture you have all those things to work together you're not just making sewing triangles together you have to have some dominance something or other going on in every creation you know or you have nothing uh, uh, so it's interesting to see what all you can do with a one layout, one or one directional organization. What you can do to interpret it in your own creative way. That's your problem to solve. Margaret cut up a lot of shirts that she had around here which is a good idea to do if you're going to make something for the first time. You don't need to invest a whole lot of money. And it's all very nice and soft, the fabric. And so, that's, that's the way Margaret did it. You, you see, up here, this corner here, you see, you, have, you can emphasize the texture of this fabric. It's all very quiet. See, there's no flower spots and no things going on to, to disrupt. This is one thing. I think it's very good. It's very good for the first run, anybody to make, and to put the thing together. The back's fun because it has a different light, different uh, uh, patterns in the background, and the different prints. There are so many different old quilts made with the same geometric layout, which is always very simple. And the enrichment, the excitement, and the various creative processes you can accomplish by following a simple geometric layout. You have so many other opportunities in every other field. You have texture, you have values, you have intensity, you have a subtle, a very subtlety very subtle. You could have it all the same value on you, but you could have bright, a brilliant color, complementary, like a bright green, a bright blue, the same value, but they're intense. So there's thousands of ways you can interpret one layer. Well, I would like to say that when I went to uh, Grace to uh, make a quilt, tell her I wanted to make a quilt. She was very, uh, she was not encouraging uh, <laughs> for me to make a quilt because she knew how much work it was and, and she felt that it was more important for me to learn something about design. I guess you know she used to teach design at the Chicago Art Institute and um, is a real uh, leading figure in that field. It was an inspiration to uh, work with her and I think she kept me from making a lot of mistakes. The learning process is interesting, isn't it? 
I think most of it comes through its inspiration, stimulation, association. I don't see how anybody can do anything yes, yes. sitting on a mountaintop. <laughs> Margaret would twelve of that in no time. It's amazing. I worked twelve hours a day for seven weeks. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Seven weeks? <clears throat> my goodness. Uh, I made I made a couple of quilts with triangles. One in which there are no blocks. I just followed my nose, so to speak. Is that the blue one? Yeah, yeah in triangles. All blue and white in different prints. So they're a little bit different tones of blues. But nevertheless, it was dark blue and white, basically. She would come over every once in a while and say, uh, well, how do you think that blue works there? <laughs> <laughs> she never said that blue doesn't work there. She it was always, well, it's interesting what that blue is doing there. And then I would say, well, what do you think it's doing? And she'd say, well, what does it seem to be doing to you? And so. <laughs> <laughs> what was it doing? It didn't work. It didn't work. And it was usually, it was always something that I'd wondered about. So in my little apartment down on Powell and Bush, I started out a lone wolf, I guess, or a chicken or something. And I, I made this uh, called an ocean wave. I just found the black and white thing in a quilt book. And I thought, well, what a possibility, but it's so stupid, they made it all just black and white. Some of the blue and white quilts, only dark blue and stark white, are simply beautiful. Because, But what makes it beautiful is a sensitivity of the relationship of that contrast of the blue with the white, and the particular size they use. Some of the beautiful ones. When I made a trip around the world, I couldn't stand most trips around the world, say if this is blue and white, this here will be white, all of them will be white, or all of them will be blue, whichever way they want to do it. See? All these would be blue, and the picture I saw in the quilt book was all blue, all blue and white. I thought, well, my goodness, I can have more fun than that. So, <laughs> you know, I had I had pattern in all of these. I didn't have any plain, see. My quilt was blue and white print, printed fabrics, lacy print, a little more heavy print. It was all blue and white, the whole quilt. But what I put in here, see that's two triangles. This here is <coughs> the size of two triangles on each side, right? Okay. <laughs> That's made up of triangles just the size of these. So I could make a shimmery kind of a pattern with my little prints. And so all of my squares shimmer. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> then I had a little darker and a little lighter. But I didn't have the same darkness, the same lightness. The block is what? What is the block? What is the unit of repeat? Right? You can go different ways. I went, look here, what if you, you see this with these four things, right? There's the middle. Over here is the same as this, right? Well, it joins up here so that these are different. So I had all, I had an interesting shimmering business going on differently in all of them. And, uh, See, everyone seemed to be fascinated with that. The, the fact that there was a certain amount of vibration, sort of, in, in the blue and white prints that I used. 